Hello everyone and welcome to Bitwarden Brilliance. Uh, thanks for joining. Let's go ahead and switch over to uh, the main scene here. We'll go ahead and uh, get started. So uh, this month uh, we wanted to talk about the Bitwarden Unified uh, self-hosted deployment. So uh, let's get a look at the agenda uh, for today's stream. Um, we're just going to do a quick overview uh, of Bitwarden, level set and make sure everyone uh, is on the same page. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about uh, the original flavor, uh, production uh, self-hosted deployment, and then uh, what Bitwarden Unified is and how it uh, provides some uh, alternatives and deployment models for other uh, scenarios. Uh, we'll go through the installation steps for Unified and then walk through a demonstration uh, of setting up a Unified instance. So Bitwarden, uh, if you are not aware, uh, is a password manager secured with uh, zero knowledge and end-to-end -end encryption. Um, we are a very easy to use uh, solution. Um, as a company, we try to be as transparent as possible. That starts with our open source nature and with uh, discussions like this. So uh, being able to uh, chat about uh, what we're doing um, in the community. Uh, I'm joined here uh, by Jake and Tony. Uh, my name is Jordan. I'm on the integration team uh, here at Bitwarden. So any questions that you have as we go through uh, this stream, feel free to drop them in the chat and we will uh, take a pause and make sure that those questions get answered. A little bit more about Bitwarden. Uh, flexible deployment options, that's obviously uh, the theme uh, of today's stream. Uh, the Bitwarden clients will keep you synchronized and sharing data securely. Um, we try to be very customer and community centric, uh, again with streams like this and with all of the Bitwarden clients we're available wherever you are. So let's talk about uh, self-hosting Bitwarden. So Bitwarden is available both as a uh, cloud SaaS service or you can self-host a Bitwarden server on your own infrastructure. Um, today what we have uh, for self-hosting is our uh, Docker Compose based application that allows us to deploy uh, Bitwarden to Windows Server or Linux host operating systems. Uh, we have an automation script that makes it very easy to set up uh, those Docker uh, containers uh, for most environments. And we also have manual installation steps for advanced deployments in air-gapped environments or where more control is needed over exactly how resources are placed. When you go self-hosted, you do have feature parity with the cloud and it's compatible with all the Bitwarden clients so that you can uh, use um, the existing suite desktop um, browser extension, mobile app, CLI, Web Vault, all of that is available both uh, cloud and self-hosting. Let's talk about uh, the topic of today's stream, Bitwarden Unified. So with Bitwarden Unified, we are trying to simplify that deployment scenario. Um, we have uh, taken all of the uh, microservices that currently run as separate containers in the production-ready self-hosted deployment and condensed them all down to a single container. Those microservices then get enabled or disabled within that single container via environment variables. So if there are uh, individual services that are not relevant for your deployment, you can claim those resources back and uh, not have have those processes running in the container. Another goal of Bitwarden Unified is to provide flexibility and portability, portability for the database. Um, so in the uh, production-ready self-hosted deployment, uh, we use Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, we ship SQL Server Express in a container for that, so you don't need uh, a license. And we also support uh, connecting to an external SQL Server database. So um, if you already have like a failover cluster or something like that, you can hook that up with the production-ready deployment. With Unified, uh, we are supporting that same database, uh, MS SQL. So again, you can bring uh, an SQL Express um, 
server to avoid any additional licensing fees, but we have also added support for uh, MariaDB or MySQL and PostgreSQL uh, to the unified deployment. So uh, that can be either an existing server or as we'll see in the demo, I'm going to deploy uh, MariaDB as a uh, container in the same compose file so that uh, I can automate the setup of that database. So Bitwarden Unified has been released as a community open beta. Uh, we're ready for testing and feedback from the community, uh, but we do not recommend this for production use during the beta phase. So you can expect to see more from us as we uh, work through that feedback from the community. I've already seen uh, you know, feedback coming in. Uh, it's been great. Keep that, uh, keep that coming in. Um, when we are ready to uh, move uh, Unified into a production-ready deployment, just keep an eye uh, on uh, all of our uh, channels, and, and we'll be sure to let everyone know. So for the Unified installation steps, uh, first we're going to install Docker, optionally Docker Compose. Like I mentioned, Compose is going to make it easy, uh, especially for the demo, uh, to uh, automatically deploy a database. We're then going to walk through uh, the environment variables that need to be uh, set up for your deployment's needs, um, specify or create a database, and then just run uh, the Docker Run or uh, Docker Compose up uh, command to bring the unified container online and it will set itself up. Uh, and then report any feedback uh, or issues. Uh, I'm going to grab that link uh, here out of the slides and drop that in the chat. So uh, that is a link to our help center for uh, information on how to get that feedback into us. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and close the slides and get started. Um, I've got a uh, VM here uh, running Rocky Linux 9, um, so we're going to use this as the uh, environment. Um, so uh, what we're going to start with is uh, looking through these installation steps just to make sure everyone's on the same page. And then uh, if you do have any uh, questions uh, about these steps as we walk through them, please uh, feel free to uh, drop those into the chat. So for system requirements, we're looking at at least 200 megabytes of RAM, and we recommend a gigabyte of storage, and then you also need uh, Docker Engine version 19 or higher. Uh, we're going to first uh, go through and set up Docker. So uh, in another tab here, I've got the uh, basic steps for setting up Docker Engine, uh, but we're going to go ahead and uh, just run these um, straight out of my scratch note file here. First, we're going to set up yum utils so that we can add, oops, I'm clipping on the bottom of the screen there. There we go. Whoop, and then I didn't hit copy properly. Copy, paste. The next step is to go ahead and install the, uh, in this case, since I'm using Rocky, I'm gonna use the CentOS uh, Docker repository. And then real quick, just go ahead and install, what is going on with my copy finger? There we go. Always read commands before you paste them, of course. <laughs> Go ahead and install Docker and Docker Compose. So once this script finishes running, uh, the next step is going to be uh, to go ahead and start Docker. So we'll just give it a second. Of course, if you already have Docker in your environment, you don't have to uh, install it again. Just go ahead and skip to the next section uh, of the setup. But uh, for the purposes of the demo, we will go ahead and uh, run through these steps. And again, any questions uh, that you have as we walk through these, please go ahead and uh, drop them in the chat. And thanks everyone for joining. We've got this last script running here, setting up the SE Linux environment for us so that our Docker uh, environment can be safe. There we go. All right, so let's make sure that we get the correct command to start Docker. And then I'm going to add my user to the Docker group. 
And real quick, I'm gonna log out and back in just to activate that. And then we are going to go into this Bitwarden directory that I've prepared beforehand. Since we are streaming, um, I am not going to be showing you certain aspects of uh, what we'll be configuring. I do have those in another uh, file that we won't be opening, but uh, I will talk through what those are. So um, like I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and use a compose file to set this up. And I have prepared one ahead of time. That's a lot of text on screen. So let's head back to uh, the Help Center and take a look at what it is that we're doing. So uh, we need to specify some environment variables. There are a set of required environment variables. And as you can see, uh, we've got a link here. And we'll go ahead and drop that in the chat. Uh, and we're gonna hop over to GitHub where we can see uh, the template for your settings.env file. So again, for the purposes of the stream, um, I don't want to put things like my database password and installation ID uh, on Twitch, but um, you will go ahead and configure this in your own settings.env file. So there are a set of required environment variables that make sure uh, that the container can get up and running. And then we have a bunch of optional settings. So depending on uh, those services, what you want to uh, deploy for your environment, in addition to those, we have down here, once we scroll past the startup stuff, uh, optional environment variables. These are for things like turning on SSL, configuring that with your uh, certificate, as well as turning on and off those services. There are a couple that are required, uh, like the admin service and the identity service. There are uh, quite a few that we enable by default. Uh, so things like the icon service, that's what's going and putting uh, those icons in uh, your vault to show you uh, visibly uh, what website a, uh, a vault item is for. So that's enabled uh, by default, but if you prefer, you can uh, go ahead and turn that off and save those resources. So uh, in uh, our demo deployment, I'm going to leave most things as stock. Um, I do have that secret.env file being mounted in, and then I have configured uh, the rest of the less sensitive environment variables directly in the Docker Compose, and we are gonna run with SSL today. So the image that we're using is the uh, bitwarden slash self dash host beta tag. Um, and then we've got some ports. And then down here, uh, we've got my MariaDB uh, database that we're going to bring up. So we'll go ahead and save that file. And then uh, if we scroll back up in the documentation here, uh, we have running um, the deployment. We've got an example Docker Compose. You can see uh, mine is based on that. And then we've got the commands to go ahead and uh, bring up the instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do Docker Compose and then immediately tail some logs uh, just to see some progress. Can't connect. Well, it wouldn't be a stream if I didn't have a bit of an issue. So let's check. <laughs> All right, so the socket is running, but it's not running. Let's just give Docker a quick restart, see if it wants to talk to me. It does not. Let's try to make sure that my user has permissions again. We will log out and back in. There we go. All right. Crisis averted. Let's go ahead and, oops, of course we have to be in the right directory. Bring up the uh, Bitwarden unified instance. So 
Uh, since we are uh, on a fresh VM here, I am going to go through this step here where we're going to look at uh, the beautiful <laughs> Docker Compose V2 progress indicators as it rolls through and downloads our container images, sets up a network, and starts those containers. We're going to get some log messages, both from that database container and the Bitwarden container. Supervisor D inside the container is what is handling that enabling and disabling of those individual processes for the different services. So I'm just going to wait here until I see the message indicating health checks. There they are. All right, so over here, we should be able to hit our self-hosted instance. So I do have a self-signed certificate, so we are going to be getting a connection private error, but here we are. This is our unified instance. We can go ahead and create an account. Off that goes. That slowdown is my uh, SMTP service trying to decide if it actually wants to send an email. And here we are. Uh, we have a uh, Bitwarden unified self-hosted instance up and running. We have an account. Uh, if I have an organization, I can go in here and upload my license file. And now my organization is set up and I can start securely sharing uh, with uh, family. User isn't in group. Thank you for that. I thought I had done that earlier with the logout, but I really appreciate that help uh, in the chat. Um, this pretty much uh, gets us to the point where you would take over, maybe start uh, importing some data, testing things out, getting us uh, that feedback, that uh, uh, link that I sent uh, earlier in the chat for uh, reporting issues or giving feedback. So uh, give this a try yourself. Uh, let us know how it goes. Um, we do have uh, some time to answer any questions that anyone has. Uh, Hemigod, thank you. Good to hear that this uh, looks simple, even though the uh, the stream gods were, were not playing very nice with me and my copy-paste didn't want to work. But yeah, any uh, questions or feedback, please uh, let us know in the chat. Otherwise, we look forward to hearing from you how this goes. And uh, yeah, I will go ahead and hop us over here to some uh, post-stream music and a little uh, post stream slideshow while we uh, go through any questions that uh, come up. Um, so, uh, Shipa asks, what would be the overhead CPU and RAM usage for a hundred users or a thousand users? That is exactly the kind of feedback that we are uh, looking for from the community and doing testing uh, on our side. We don't yet know what kind of overhead for CPU and RAM at various different user counts this single container uses. What I can tell you, if you go over to our um, self-hosted deployment for the multi-container, um, the minimum uh, specifications for the multi-container are two gigabytes of RAM, and we recommend uh, starting with four. And with four gigabytes of RAM in the multi-container, um, and keep in mind this does include the database, uh, the uh, Microsoft SQL Server database, we expect somewhere in the mid to high uh, four-digit user count at that four gigs of RAM in Linux. So one of the biggest consumers of RAM in the original uh, self-hosted deployment, the one that's ready for production today, is that Microsoft SQL Server database. So one of the things that we are looking at benchmark-wise with Unified is if we use a slimmer uh, in RAM database, uh, how much further can we push those uh, uh, user counts on various RAM, but uh, you can definitely expect that as we get feedback in from the community, as we do testing ourselves, uh, we will be uh, adding additionally system requirements and then recommended specs for unified deployments. Good question. 
anyone else uh, have any questions today? So if not, um, I will go ahead and kick us into some post stream music just to give folks uh, time to, uh, you know, type out any additional questions that they have. Um, otherwise, if there aren't any further questions, thanks very much for joining. Uh, thanks for uh, participating in the chat, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon uh, on how uh, this works in your environment. Thanks, folks. Mm -hmm.